So OpenAI just dropped GPT-5, and the internet's not exactly throwing a celebration. After months of Sam Altman teasing this as some kind of watershed moment in AI, posting Death Star images on Twitter, drawing comparisons to the Manhattan Project, and building expectations for what he called our smartest, fastest, most useful model yet, the actual release has left a significant portion of users feeling like they got punked. We're talking about users complaining on Reddit and X, calling it a disaster. But here's the thing. When you dig past the user outrage and actually examine what GPT-5 delivers versus what people expected, there's a much more complex story here about AI development, business models, and the psychology of hype cycles. So today we're breaking down the hype versus the reality, the technical wins versus the user complaints, the infamous chart crimes, and most importantly, whether GPT-5 is actually the disaster some people are calling it, or if this is something else entirely. Let's start with the hype, because OpenAI really went nuclear with their marketing campaign. In the weeks leading up to the launch, Sam Altman was posting cryptic teasers. We're talking Death Star photos on Twitter, mysterious countdowns, and teases about a lot to show in what he promised would be a longer-than-usual livestream. The company even had what appeared to be an accidental leak from Microsoft that basically confirmed all the rumors about GPT-5's revolutionary capabilities. This wasn't just marketing. This was psychological warfare to maximize anticipation. The biggest attention grabber was Altman himself, who started talking about having a personal crisis after GPT-5 solved problems he'd been wrestling with in seconds. And look, from a marketing perspective, this was brilliant. OpenAI dominated the conversation for weeks. Every tech AI enthusiast was speculating about what GPT-5 would bring. People were genuinely expecting something approaching AGI in a chat GPT wrapper. So what did GPT-5 actually deliver? On paper, the improvements are substantial and genuinely impressive. We're looking at 74.9% on SWE Bench verified for coding tasks. That's a meaningful jump from GPT-4's 52%. In terms of raw capabilities, GPT-5 sets new benchmarks in several key areas. On coding specifically, it achieved 88% on the Ader Polyglot benchmark, which measures real-world code editing capabilities. For mathematics, it scored 94.6%, on AIME 2025 without tools. That's approaching the performance level of math competition champions. But here's where we hit the first major disconnect between hype and reality. These improvements, while significant, are fundamentally incremental. We're not talking about some massive qualitative leap forward. We're talking about the kind of steady, predictable progress you'd expect from a maturing technology. The demos during the launch were impressive, showing GPT-5 building complete web applications from single prompts, creating functional games and handling complex multi-step coding tasks. But if you've been following AI development closely, this felt more evolutionary than revolutionary. Now we need to talk about what might be the most embarrassing part of this entire launch, what the internet quickly dubbed chart crime. During the live presentation, OpenAI displayed several benchmark graphs that were just mathematically wrong, not subjectively misleading, literally incorrect. Sam Altman quickly called it a mega chart screw up and blamed it on people working late and being tired. An OpenAI marketing employee apologized for the unintentional chart crime. The charts in the published blog post were eventually corrected, but the damage was done. This wasn't just a small technical error. This was a company known for building truth-generating AI systems presenting obviously false data during their biggest product launch in two years. The incident sparked thousands of jokes and conspiracy theories. Some users sarcastically asked if the charts were generated by GPT-5 itself. The chart crimes were just the beginning. The real drama started unfolding in user communities, where the reaction was swift and deeply polarized. Within hours of the launch, Reddit and X were flooded with complaints. The complaints weren't just about performance, they were about a fundamental change in the user experience. See, OpenAI didn't just release GPT-5, they simultaneously removed access to older models that people had grown attached to, particularly GPT-4.0. Suddenly, ChatGPT Plus subscribers found themselves locked into a new system with usage limits and automatic model switching they couldn't control. Users described the new experience as impersonal. Within 24 hours, Sam Altman had to promise in a Reddit AMA that they would bring back GPT-4.0 for Plus users, essentially admitting they had misread their user base. The reaction wasn't universally negative. Professional developers and enterprise users were largely praising GPT-5, particularly for coding tasks. Companies like Cursor and Versal called it the smartest model they'd ever used, highlighting its superior performance on complex, mission-critical workloads. I think the key to understanding the GPT-5 backlash isn't really about AI capabilities. It's about business model changes that most users didn't see coming. Running GPT-5, especially the thinking version, is incredibly expensive. We're talking about roughly five times the computational cost of the simpler variants. To manage these costs without destroying their margins, OpenAI implemented what you could call a luxury cognition system. Free and plus users get throttled versions with hard usage limits. 
After hitting their caps, they're automatically switched to lighter models. Meanwhile, pro subscribers paying $200 per month get access to the full GPT-5 experience. There's also a bigger story here that goes beyond just user complaints and business models. GPT-5's reception has reignited this fundamental debate about whether we're hitting a scaling wall in AI development. For years, the pattern in AI was beautifully simple. More data, bigger models, more compute power equals dramatically better results. But several prominent AI researchers, including Gary Marcus, are now suggesting that pure scaling isn't delivering the exponential gains it used to. Marcus called GPT-5 overdue, overhyped, and underwhelming. And he's not wrong that the improvements feel more evolutionary than revolutionary. This doesn't mean AI progress has stopped. It just means the progress looks different now. Instead of shocking capability leaps that blow people's minds, we're getting refinements, efficiency improvements, and better reliability. The iPhone moment jumps might be behind us, replaced by more predictable incremental advances. Sam Altman himself seemed to acknowledge this during the launch, describing GPT-5 as a significant step along the path to AGI, while also admitting it's definitely not there yet. So, after cutting through all the drama, how does GPT-5 actually perform? The honest answer is, it depends entirely on what you're doing and which tier you're accessing. For coding and technical tasks, GPT-5 is genuinely impressive. The vibe coding demonstrations weren't just marketing fluff. The model really can generate functional applications from natural language descriptions. For mathematical reasoning, it is approaching human expert-level performance on competition mathematics. For scientific analysis and research tasks, GPT-5 shows clear improvements in accuracy and depth of reasoning. But for general conversational use, what the stuff most people actually do with ChatGPT, the improvements are much more subtle. The model is more reliable and less likely to hallucinate, which is objectively better, but it also feels less creative, which many users interpret as worse. One area where the hype reality gap is particularly noticeable is in multimodal capabilities. The pre-launch speculation included rumors about revolutionary video processing, real-time visual analysis, and seamless integration of text, image, and audio processing. The reality is more modest. GPT-5 does handle images and text together more effectively than previous models, and the voice integration is smoother. But we didn't get the sci-fi level multimodal AI that some people were expecting. Video processing remains limited, and the most impressive multimodal features are still in preview or limited to specific user tiers. The upcoming Gmail and Google Calendar integrations shown in demos are genuinely useful, but they're also the kind of incremental productivity improvements that feel evolutionary rather than revolutionary. It's helpful, not earth-shattering. We also can't evaluate GPT-5 in isolation. This launch happened in an increasingly competitive landscape, where Anthropic's Claude Opus 4.1 achieves similar coding scores, 74.5% versus GPT-5's 74.9%. Google's Gemini offers superior multimodal capabilities in some areas, and various open-source models provide comparable performance at lower costs. The days when OpenAI could drop a new model and instantly reset the entire AI landscape are probably over. GPT-5 is competing for incremental advantages rather than establishing dominant superiority. Elon Musk's competitive response was telling, immediately claiming that XAI's Grok 4 Heavy had already surpassed GPT-5's intelligence, and teasing Grok 5 as crushingly good. Whether that's accurate or just typical Musk yapping on X, it shows how quickly the competitive environment has evolved. This competitive pressure likely contributed to some of the overhyping around GPT-5. When you're no longer the clear leader, the temptation to oversell your achievements becomes stronger. What does the GPT-5 launch tell us about the future of AI development? First, it confirms that we're entering a new phase where progress looks more like steady improvement than revolutionary breakthroughs. The smartphone analogy is apt. We're past the iPhone moment and into the incremental upgrade cycle. Second, it shows how business model considerations are becoming as important as technical capabilities. The luxury cognition tier system that OpenAI implemented with GPT-5 will likely become the norm across the industry as computational costs remain high. Third, it demonstrates that user expectations have become incredibly difficult to manage. When people expect AGI and get a very good but still clearly artificial, AI disappointment is inevitable regardless of actual performance improvements. The competitive landscape is also pushing companies towards specialization rather than general dominance. We're seeing models optimized for specific tasks, coding, creative writing, multimodal processing, rather than one model that's clearly superior at everything. The GPT-5 launch provides a perfect case study in how hype cycles work in the AI industry. The pre-launch speculation created expectations that no incremental improvement could possibly meet. This disconnect between marketing hype and technical reality is becoming a pattern across the AI industry. Companies are under enormous pressure to maintain momentum and investor confidence, which creates incentives for overselling capabilities. The solution isn't to ignore AI progress, 
the improvements in GPT-5 are real and valuable. The solution is to calibrate expectations to match the actual trajectory of technological development. So, is GPT-5 an overhyped disaster? The answer is both yes and no, depending on your perspective and what you were expecting. As a piece of technology, GPT-5 represents solid, meaningful progress. It's better at coding, more accurate in its reasoning, less prone to hallucinations, and more efficient in its resource usage. For developers and enterprises using AI for serious work, these improvements are genuinely valuable. As a consumer product, the story is more complicated. The business model changes that accompanied the technical improvements created a more tiered, restricted experience for many users. Looking forward, the GPT-5 launch might mark the end of the shocking AI breakthrough era and the beginning of a more mature, incremental improvement phase. What's your take? Have you tried GPT-5 and does it live up to the hype? Or are you in the disappointed camp? The truth, as always, probably lies somewhere in between the extremes. But understanding where exactly that middle ground is will be crucial for navigating the next phase of AI development.